And then on Easter Tuesday, my father, and my father was bringing me up to do a bit of fishing in a place up at the top of the Glencairn Road called the Green Gate. And I remember in those days there, there weren't any lunch boxes or anything, so I had a, a couple of pieces of bread and jam and a bottle of fizz, and we were going past up, just up the shankle. And the night before, my mother and father used to listen to a man called Lord Ha Ha, and he had a very nasal voice, and he spoke Germany calling, Germany calling, this is Lord Ha Ha. Belfast will be getting their Easter eggs, and they'll not be rolling them down the cave hill. They'll be coming from the sky. And I remember that vividly. Lord Ha Ha was a propagandist from Dublin, and he was one of the most hated people in the war. But we're going up the up the, the the road, and the police stopped us, and they started searching us, and they asked for identity and made us open the lunch and everything else. And it was a beautiful day, a really beautiful day like today, but cold. And so we went on up and come down that night. And there was an earlier an earlier warning about a couple of weeks before that, I think. This was Easter Tuesday I'm talking about now. And we were evacuated to the school. We were put up in the school van a couple of streets away. And everybody had to put their gas mask on. And at the bottom of each pe people's stairs, the stairs came down to the door, there was a bag called a hit and run bag. And that's where everybody kept their policies and their ration books, the essentials. And so anyway, uh, that night, the syringe went and, and it was an awful, it sent a shiver through your spine. And everything was all right. And then all of a sudden we heard, heard these thuds. And I went out to the door and all the children in the street were out. We thought it was great. Said, so look, it's, it's, it's like fairy land, all lit up. Little did we know that the German planes were dropping, dropping flares down, you see. And then about, I think it was about a half an hour later, looked out and saw these parachutes coming down and we thought it was pilots bailing out but they were in fact land mines and one of them landed but then before that we were evacuated well everybody called it running to the hills and the shanker road was packed with people walking up to the Glen Cairn where they could get safety but about about must have been about 11 o'clock I'm not sure anyway uh, my sister told us that a, a couple of streets away was a street called Percy Street and pe people saw the bomb coming down and some of them were on to it but it was uh, it destroyed a shelter, an air raid shelter and at, at the corner of Westmoreland Street and Northumberland Street or Westmoreland Street and Percy Street there were a, a, a people called Swan lived. I knew a lot of people in Percy Street, but they were at the corner of Westmoreland Street and Percy Street, and there were six for family, and five of them went in to their air raid shelter, but the other one was in a wheelchair, and she opted to stay under the stairs, where, where people said it was the safest place in the house. But anyway, the bomb fell down, and her, all her people were in the... The, the the air raid shelter was totally destroyed, and the story behind that was that, in the, in those days, when the sirens went, all places of entertainment had to be evacuated, and people walked out of them, and they were walking from a, a lot of young people, in the Rialto dance hall, which is down, Peter's Hill, where, just where about the kitchen work kitchen shop is now, used to be a few PJs and they were coming out and a lot of them they wouldn't they would a policeman a B special I think it was is alleged to have stopped them at Percy Street wouldn't let them go any further and they made them go into the area shelter. Consequently a lot of them were killed or injured. But my sister was one of those people but she wasn't killed. 
She said, I only live two streets away, and they let her go up. And that was the story. And then the next morning, uh, it wasn't like now. I mean, when incident occurs, they seal it off. People were just walking about, and the place was totally destroyed. And I saw, I saw, and I thought, I always thought I imagined this. I saw a, a, a woman holding a baby, and there was a piece of plate glass stuck through the two of them, stuck to the wall. And then we got to hear more Mossfield Street, all those. They were all just flattened. And our house had the, the roof blown up off it when we came back. And where my granny slept, there was a big piece of shrapnel, but she was out of the house at the time, or she could have been killed. Yeah. And the only thing that, that, that worried me and my sister was we had a wee cat called Snowball, and on the Shankill Road, the shops on the Shankill Road were destroyed, some of them, beside Quinn's, which was a well-known fruit merchant's, and that's what we found a cat in there that was killed. And then people... When we went up to the the the, 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 the Glen Cairn, we're lying in the fields, and we heard this crump. And when we were coming back again, we discovered that the bomb had landed two fields away. And then when we came down, we saw the devastation. There were thousands of people in the fields, yeah. just lying with old coats or blankets over them. And then when, when we came down, we found it, it was unbelievable. Uh, the next day, we couldn't sleep in the house. But no, we went. We went back to the house when when the siren did, when the siren, all clear. It was a continuous note. Yeah. The, the, when the siren rang, it was like, and then it was just a, a, a just a long note, and then people just went back to the house. Wouldn't let us into the house for a, I think it was about a, a week, but we were evacuated. We were evacuated in Newton Arms. Yeah. My father. Started Springfield, him and his brother started Springfield Accordion Band, and he used to take a wee uh, band in a place called Bally Cullen. And I always wondered where Bally Cullen was until a few years ago somebody showed me it. If you're coming out of Newton Arts shopping centre and you go up the hill, just into the left, there's a wee group of, uh, of like concrete built houses, grey. And that's Ballycolm Village. And he conducted that wee band. So we had a place to go to in Bally Alton. Uh, uh, the lady was called Skillen. But my, my, my cousins, they were, they were evacuated too. They lived off Manor Street in Aloha Street, which got a bad, bad knock. And then we arrived at the house. And we lived there for about six months.